Thanks for staying with us. So with different infectious diseases roaming around the world, the Global Vaccine Summit, which everybody's talking about right now, was held June 4th, 2020. They raised over $7.4 billion to replenish Gavi, the vaccine alliance, which will protect millions of children against infectious diseases, including Nigeria. To get more information on this, we have with us joining us is the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Lang. Good morning, madam. Are you there? I'm here. It's a great pleasure to join you this morning. Good to have you. So the summit everybody's talking about uh, took place and a lot of money was raised. Could you give us a summary of what was achieved at that summit? Yes, thank you for having me on. So this was hosted virtually by our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and it, was, it took place on the 4th of June. We had uh, 35 head of, heads of state there and 52 countries represented. And you mentioned that our target was to raise $7.4 billion, but we are delighted because we exceeded that target and raised $8.5 billion. And that means that an additional 300 million children will be immunized each year as a result of this summit. But the second purpose of the summit was to collaborate together on finding a vaccine for coronavirus, but critically importantly, making sure that can be rolled out across the world for the poorer countries as well as the richer countries. So a great success. Right. So, so right. okay. So, um, are there any indicate? Is there any indication that um, the vaccines that are being worked on will be rolled out anytime soon? Um, from the meeting, do we get? Did you did you get that, or is this something that's still a long time coming? Well, as I think you probably know, there are scientists collaborating around the world on developing a vaccine. And we have two centres in the UK, one at Oxford, one at Imperial College London, who are working absolutely intensively. And what's interesting about the collaboration against coronavirus, normally you do a fairly slow process where you do trials and then only then do you move into production of the vaccines. What scientists are doing and have agreed to do with coronavirus, given the urgency, is to start the production line in parallel with the trials. So if all goes well, we may have something um, sort of tested by around September time, if all goes well. But of course, it will still take a, a lot of time to roll that out globally. And that's where the uh, Gavi Summit really comes in, because that's the commitment to ensure that this won't be just a vaccine for those who can pay. It will be affordable and we'll have the systems to roll it out, hopefully. Um, so the vaccine, um, you see, in the past, many um, Africans wait for this global alliance to get vaccines for these kind of diseases. But today, Africa has somewhat come of age where we seem to find solutions within. Um, is the summit considering the fact that Africa might have its own vaccine? And if it does, would we be allowed to use it and not have to depend on the global um, agreements to use this um, HPV vaccine? Well, I think, well, first, before I meant to go back to coronavirus, I think I just want to emphasize that, you know, the, the, the main role of the Global Vaccine Alliance has been to prevent diseases in millions and millions of children around the year. It is because we now vaccinate children against polio, against measles, meningitis, yellow fever, diphtheria, and so on, the millions and millions of lives are saved. And this, Nigeria has benefited from this. And in fact, Nigeria has the biggest cohort each year of children under 11 months, 8.4 million of them, who need to be vaccinated. And it's a collaboration between the government of Nigeria, the WHO and Gavi that allows that to happen. And that is continuing. And one of the worries we had about the, um, the plans to lock down around coronavirus was that those vaccination programs would stop. So there's a real commitment now to make sure they don't. In terms of a vaccine against coronavirus, I think there is, there's no special you know, favors here, privileges. Anybody who's able to develop a vaccine, um, wherever it comes from in the world, and if Nigerian scientists are able to work on this, I think the world will be very grateful. So this is all about collaboration, bringing the best brains together. And I think coronavirus, despite its huge challenges and the tragedy of many deaths, there are some good things that have come out of it, particularly around the importance of science and scientific collaboration. Um, many Nigerians and many Africans have this distrust for, um, about vaccines. And um, there was this trial a few years ago by a pharmaceutical company that um, vaccinated children, 
tri a trial vaccination with children with meningitis. And a lot of children died, a lot of them were um, disabled. So how do you want to convince us or convince the ones who are very doubtful about these vaccines? How are you going to do that? Well, I think, you know, it's, I understand that there is sometimes some skepticism and worries about vaccines and people who put themselves forward to trial, and this should of course be volunteers and it should never be children who are used in trials without their consent. Um, but we do obviously have to test vaccines, and that's already happening. As I mentioned, the collaboration that's going on at Oxford University and Imperial, there are people who are putting themselves forward for trials. And of course, you have two groups, and they don't know whether they've received the vaccine or if they're the control group who don't receive the vaccine. Um, so what I would say is that look at the evidence in terms of vaccination. As I mentioned earlier, sorry, I've just had a power cut. Hope you can still see me. Um, you know, there's, there are millions and millions of children who are alive today who are now adults as a result of the, the really successful vaccination programs that have gone on across the world. And it's children who don't receive vaccination, sadly, are the ones who die. Yeah. And the testing is obviously a critical part of, of ensuring safety of those vaccines. But anyone who's in a trial, it should be with very clear, informed consent. So I completely understand if people have uh, been skeptical of, around some of malpractice, that should not have happened. Yeah, so going back to the amount that was raised, that is a huge amount. But as a Nigerian, I'm thinking, what does that mean for Nigerians right now? What do we expect to benefit from this billions of dollars raised? So Nigeria is one of the biggest beneficiaries of Gavi, and Gavi has been working here, the Global Vaccine Alliance, with WHO for many, many years. And actually, Nigeria should have been graduated from this program, but exceptionally, that's been extended out to 2028. So Gavi will be putting in a billion dollars over that period, and Nigeria government itself $1.5 billion to continue these programs of vaccination. In terms of looking ahead to a vaccine, um, as we know, the coronavirus will not be tackled until the world has tackled it. That means everyone has to be vaccinated ultimately. So Nigeria will be no different. And I think what was really good about this, this Gavi summit was that commitment that all the heads of state made, all the partners made, and it included partners from the private sector and civil society, that a vaccine must be available to everyone. So Nigeria will obviously also benefit from that. Right, so we're hearing rumors about the fact that part of the global leaders consideration is the fact that you can't come into their country without some documentation to show that you've been vaccinated against COVID-19. And it's gonna be some sort of um, uh, a ticket to get into airlines, to travel to any country. Is that correct or is it just a rumor? So are you talking about in the UK or here in Nigeria? Well, in the UK, or uh, I mean, other countries, was that, was, that, was that discussed at the summit where if you don't have that vaccine, you can't be allowed to get into their country? No, no, that was not discussed because obviously the vaccine is not available yet. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I understand, some countries are demanding, including Nigeria, as I understand it, that when you come in, you need to have shown that you have either tested negative or, or have a test done when you arrive here and when you receive the results um, and then in the meantime be in quarantine. So that seems to me one of you know, practical measures to try and ensure that we contain the spread of the virus. When we do have a, a, um, a vaccine, hopefully before too long, um, but realistically probably another 18 months or so, I would have thought, um, having um, a vaccination certificate, as we do with yellow fever. When I come into Nigeria, I have to show my yellow fever certificate. And that's, that's very sensible in my view, because that's how we contain the, these very infectious diseases spreading from country to country. No one's protected from these viruses. They don't respect borders. So showing that you have been vaccinated is, is I think, good practice as we do with yellow fever. Yeah, I have a, um, so what can like an individual do, someone like me? I know that governments are making donations, um, non-governmental organizations, just different um, CSOs come together, you know, to make donations towards Gavi. But what can an individual do in a country? In what way can I volunteer or be of, you know, just be part of this, um, to support this uh, alliance? 
sorry, another power cut. Well, I think as individuals, the first and most important thing we each need to do is to respect the public health guidelines and to show leadership on that, and to encourage and support others to do it, to respect two metre distancing, to wear masks in public, to um, showcase washing of hands and use of sanitation. All the evidence suggests is that these basic health, um, public health measures are the most effective ways of containing a virus. And particularly now that things are loosening up in most countries, the, the very severe lockdowns can't last forever because there are very, very severe impacts on people's livelihoods. Right. So in order for us to continue to work together, we need to respect those public health guidance. So that's the most important thing for an individual. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Appreciate you being here. It's been a real pleasure. I hope to be on again. Thank you for having me. We've been speaking with the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Katrina Liang. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. You can watch Your View on TVC every Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Nigerian time on DSTV Channel 418, Go TV Channel 27 and Channel 47, Star Times Channel 121 and Channel 307, Play TV Channel 801 and Channel 190, UHF 49, Sky Channel 515 for UK viewers. Watch live on Facebook at TVC Connect and on our website, tvcentertainment.tv forward slash livestream.